Somebody said that uh, I heard a word that Barb has to put ice packs on her sewing machine to keep it from overheating. Uh, that's why I've heard that. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, but uh, she sews like the wind. Yeah. Amazing. Well, um, the beginning, beginning of each week, and sometimes two weeks ahead of time, I begin to read and study the Word to find where the Lord would have me to go for the coming weeks ahead. And I had started on a message I thought was worthwhile, and God's Word is always worthwhile, no matter what Word it may be. But I do believe there are times when God really has, we need to really find what He wants said when He wants it said. And today is one of those times where I started over again and, okay, God, show me what we need to give today to prepare ourselves for what God has for us and what we are looking at in the coming days ahead for our country and for our time. You know, there are times when uh, very strategic things are happening, and I think this week our country is facing one of those very strategic times in history, and, and it's very important. And I felt, I got up one morning real early, about 4.30 or 5, and I really felt the Lord give me the, the direction where to go. And uh, I have preached messages on hope last year here. But this was a different perspective that I felt like I should explore. The fight, the battle, the struggle, keeping hope alive in difficult times. We are in difficult times as a nation, as a world, but as a nation. We, we are in a very divided nation that we have. And uh, we have, we're living in a godless culture. We see that uh, every day. So we're living in very, very ominous times. And it seems like we're, we keep talking about a tipping point, and I think we are there at that tipping point. Father, I pray that you will speak to us today through your word that you put in my heart to give to prepare us and to lead us to truth that will change us, that will make a difference. And we thank you for your word that is true, that we can go to the bank with, we can depend on. Your word will never fail. Heaven and earth will pass, but your word will stand. Thank you, Lord. And everybody said amen. amen. Keeping our hope alive is, uh, it is a fight. It's exactly what it is. It's a fight of faith. It's a fight of trust, trusting God. It is a battle. Keeping our hope alive is a battle. It's a spiritual battle. At times, it is an incredible struggle to stay up, to keep your hope up, to walk in trust, to walk in faith. Hope is an anchor of the soul, Hebrews 6, 19 says. Hope is an anchor of the soul, sure and steadfast. And we need that. We've got to have it. We've got to have that security, that steadfastness that hope gives. An anchor, an anchor that holds. Amen? How many are get glad that we have an anchor that holds? The fight, it's a fight. Some of you have fought this fight maybe in recent times. You struggle with keeping yourself walking in faith and keeping your hope alive. And we will, I think, have that struggle and have that fight until we see Christ. Psalms 62, 5 and 6. 
Find rest, O oh my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from Him. Come on, people. My hope comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense or my fortress, one translation says. I will not be shaken. I will not be moved. We sang that this morning, Ed. Standing in His love, we're not shaken. We're not moved. Find rest, O oh my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He's my defense, my fortress. I will not be removed. I will not be shaken. Listen. He is our strength for today. And He is our hope for tomorrow. Come on. We went uh, to see the leaves last Sunday, but we also went to see two ministers' families, two couples that have retired, that had meant a lot to us, that live towards the leaves where we were going to see. And we went to minister to those two couples that are a little bit older than we are, which means they were a little bit old. And... Um, they're wonderful people, and we, we ministered them in prayer, ministered them, and had a had church in their homes. I mean, we God came down, the presence of God came down, and it was a great time to bring hope and encouragement. We can bring encouragement to people as believers, but only God can give us the hope that we need. We can encourage. We need that morale plasma that helps to encourage one another. But only God gives us the sure hope that we need. It comes from Him. Psalms 119, 114. You are my hiding place and shield. Your word is the source of my hope. The source of hope. Listen, God is good. He is the source of our hope. Keeping your hope alive in difficult times at times is a real spiritual battle. And don't be too hard on yourself when you see yourself struggling. Some of the greatest people in the Old Testament went through experiences of that sort. Elijah, the great prophet Elijah, we just studied him on Wednesday night. He had a down moment. He was really depressed. I mean, he's ever felt depressed. Well, Elijah, the great prophet of God, who called fire down from heaven and took care of all those false prophets. He did run from Jezebel a little bit fast, but uh, he got a little scared of that woman. But he called fire down from heaven. And all those false prophets that were there, one against 450 and others. He just got down into prayer and he said, God, I'm the only one left. God said, there's, there's thousands that haven't bowed their knee to Baal yet. But he, he said, God, just, just let me die. He prayed to die. I mean, he's ever done that. You've been struggling with your hope and trying to keep it alive, and you just was a little bit down, and you just sometimes felt like Elijah. David had to outright reject the pity party he was getting into. He had to talk to himself. Has anybody here ever had to talk to yourself? Well, some people think that you need to call the white coat people when you talk to yourself, but sometimes you've got to talk to yourself. And David talked to himself. He's, he was kind of getting into a pity thing. You see, if you have a pity party going on, Satan will come and supply the balloons and the whistles to make the party go. <laughs> he had to talk to himself and get his focus back on God and God's faithfulness. Listen, when you're struggling with how you're feeling and you feel a little down and you, uh, your hope is just not what it should be, you got to talk to yourself and remind yourself on the faithfulness of who God is. Yeah. Come on. 
in these last days, the last of the last days, we are fighting for our very lives. Spiritual warfare, I do believe, is intensifying and will continue till we see Christ face to face. Come on. Don't you sense that, that the spiritual battles are intensifying as the closer we come to the end and to the coming of Christ? I think we see that and know that. There has always been a battle between God-fearing people and the godless people of our culture and society. It's always been. But I do believe now it is reaching and has reached a tipping point. There's always been God-haters. There's always been people that had nothing to do with the church and looked down upon the Christians. But boy, now in this time and where we are now, it's really gotten quite fierce and very intense. But I, make, I, I prayed over this statement and I, I make it boldly today. If the godless peach people of our culture prevail, we are in for the spiritual fight of our lives. I said, if the godless people of this culture prevail, we are in for the spiritual fight of our, of our lives. Paul says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. One of the translations says, the despotisms, the empires, the forces that control and govern this dark world. The despotisms, the empires, the forces that control and govern this dark world. That's what we're fighting against. Come on. Not flesh and blood. It's people that represent that, but it's the spirit that's behind it. Through all of this, we must maintain our hope if we're going to walk in faith and we're going to walk in victory. Come on. Romans 8.25, which is not in your notes. Patience keeps hope alive. Paul says, if we hope for that which we see not, do we with patience have to wait for it? Patience keeps our hope alive, and hope keeps our faith alive. I preached that last year to you. It's true. Walk in patience keeps our hope going. Walk in hope keeps our faith going. Many are desperate for that kind of biblical hope. Thousands have almost lost and given up the fight. Through this pandemic, social ills are on the rise. Alcoholism, suicide, drug addiction, abuse is growing. And our, they, they've given stats on the news regularly in the last weeks. I've seen several reports of how it's rising in our society. Biblical hope is needed. Biblical hope is defined this way. This is one of the best definitions of biblical hope that I've ever have read or come across. Biblical hope could be defined as a steady expectation for good. And when you're living in this culture we're living in, man, it takes a lot to, to keep that hope alive. Steady expectation for good. And you say, oh, man, that's hard to maintain that. Steady. Everybody say steady. Expectation for good. Folks, that ain't easy to do right now. Come on. Steady. Steady. Expectation for good is a definition of biblical hope. People need that kind of hope. A hope that is greater than materialism. Greater than technology. Listen, hugging your iPhone in bed at night ain't going to help you. You got to have God to help you. 
You need that kind of hope. We need a hope that's greater than materialism. I love the shop. I love my clothes. I buy clothes. I buy them for 20 cents on the dollar, but I buy them. <laughs> I'm, I'm a shopper. I think, you know, I'm surprised they haven't put a sign out for me to park right out in front with my name on it. But we got to have a hope that's greater than materialism. We got to have a hope that's greater than technology. We got to have a hope that's greater than our present circumstances and problems. Come on. And we even have to have a biblical hope that's greater than election results. Come on with me now. November the 3rd will come and go, and the throne of God will not be shaken. November the 3rd will come and go. But the saving work of Jesus Christ on the cross cannot be overturned by the government. November the 3rd will come and go, but our anchor will hold within the veil. November the 3rd will come and go, but our inheritance will never perish or spoil or fade. November the 3rd will come and go, but our living hope will be seated at the right hand of God the Father with all angels and authorities powers in submission to him, Lord God Almighty. Waters may rise, storms may blow, but we need not be shaken, for we are no longer captives of the dominion of darkness. Stand firm. We do not fear what they fear. Anyway, God is not, un he is not shaken. He is unshakable. And by the way, we're on our way home. Come on. We're not here to stay forever. We're on our way home, people. We just worry for the loved ones that are not saved. We worry about our neighbors. We worry about some of our family members. But after November the 3rd, God's still on the throne. No matter what happens. Come on. Are you losing your fight in keeping your hope alive? You may have trust issues with God and His Word that need to be resolved. It's true. If we find ourselves shake, shaky in our hope, we've got to go back to the Word. We've got to go back to God's character. The foundation of one's sure hope is based on the nature and character of God, His Son, and His Word. The focus of believers' hope can never be on human beings. Listen, no particular president is going to save you. No particular Congress is voted in is going to save you. We're concerned, and we know what we'd like to see happen. But listen, the arm of flesh can't do it for you. It never has and never will. Psalms 33, 16, and 18. No king, no mighty man is delivered by much strength. Verse 18. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them who fear him, upon them who hope in his mercy. The, 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 the flesh will fail you every time. The message of hope came through Jeremiah in a time of hopeless desperation and destruction going on in Israel. And the Lord said, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man who trusts in man. Can I read that again? Jeremiah, the Lord saith, Cursed be the man who trusts in man. And make flesh his arm, whose heart departs from the Lord. He shall be like a shrub in the desert, unable to see the coming good. A little commentary. A stunning shrub in the desert with no hope for the future. Blessed is the man who trusteth in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, who spreadeth out her roots by the river rivers and shall not see when heat comes but her leaf shall be green in other words when the heat comes he has nothing to fear come on when the heat comes we have nothing to fear when the heat comes we have nothing to fear come on this is a time when Israel was facing desperate situations a time of hopelessness 
And the Lord said, Cursed be the man who trusts in a man. The arm of flesh will always fail you. We as good citizens try to vote the most righteous vote we can come up with. We try to make a vote that matches what we believe the Word of God declares. That's, I don't know why some church people or people who call themselves Christians, while they struggle with that, I find that very simple. You take the Word of God, you see what the policies are, and you make your decision. It's not rocket science. But some Christians seem to struggle with that. I don't know why. You just line up what is the closest to what you think the Word declares, and you make your choice. Not complicated. Paul speaks personally of his victory of hope in 2 Corinthians 4.18. He says, we're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Always confident of victory. Come on. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. One says, knocked down, but not destroyed. And then in verse 18 of the same chapter, while we look at things which are seen, trials, tests, that we're presently enduring, we, but at things which are not seen by the eyes, but seen by faith. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. November the 4th, God is still on the throne. Amen. I told you about David talking to himself in Psalms 42, 11. But, oh, my soul, don't be discouraged. Don't be upset. But hope thou in God. Expect God to act. For I know I shall have plenty of reasons to praise him for all that he will do. He is my help and he is my God. By faith, Paul claims restoration of hope. Yeah, he's being persecuted. Yes, distressed. Knocked down, but not knocked out. Come on. David says, oh, my soul, don't be discouraged. Don't be upset. I mean, just had to do that. Talk to yourself a little bit. And I finish with Psalms 46 in a more modern version. I like this. God is our refuge and strength, a tested help in the time of trouble. How many say amen to that? And so, and so, we need not fear, even if the world blows up. Come on. And the mountains crumble into the sea. Now, if I was, yeah, last week, we rode up two hours to Fancy Gap. If I saw that mountain blow up, I see it would have caught my attention. I guarantee you that. God is our refuge and strength, a tested help in the time. Of, and we need not fear if the world blows up and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble. There is a river of joy. I said there is a river of joy flowing through the city of our God, the sacred home of God above all gods. God himself is living in that city. Therefore, it stands unmoved despite the torment turmoil everywhere. He will not delay his help. The nations rant and rave in anger, but when God speaks, the earth melts in submission, and kingdoms totter in ruin. Come on. The commander of heavenly armies is here among us. I said the commander of the heavenly armies is here among us. He, the God of Jacob, has come to rescue us. Come and see the glorious things that our God does, how he brings ruin upon the world and causes wars to end through the earth, breaking and burning every weapon. Stand silent. Know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation in the world. The commander of the heavenly armies is here among us. He is God of Jacob, has come to rescue us. Come on. Golly, Moses. I love that. I love that. 
the commander of the heavenly armies is here among us he the God of Jacob has come to rescue us wow I'm sorry I got so emotional I'll tell you the truth oh, man I want you to know that in Romans 8 31 what shall we conclude Paul says from this if God be for us who can be against us it don't matter verse 35 who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress troubles or difficulties persecution famine nakedness peril or sword of our enemies no everybody say no in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us for I am persuaded I am convinced that neither death nor life nor superpowers superhuman powers in this world or the world to come nor heights nor death nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord God's people should be the most confident people on the face of the earth our sins are forgiven our prayers are answered our God is with us and he's the anchor of our souls we're walking in hope we're declaring hope and we're going to live our lives in hope because hope is going to keep our faith alive and faith is going to keep you alive spiritually thank you Lord let's prepare for for our taking communion and uh joe if you'll kind of get us some music going there uh, jensen frank